So hi, everybody. This is Rebecca from Chia, California, and I'm here with my friend Michaela. Hello, everyone. Hi. Um, I'm Chia's general manager, and Michaela is um, Chia's regional advisory board member, as well as a private school satellite program uh, leader here in the Inland Empire. And we're here today to talk about um, what's the best fit for your family. Many of you have asked in the um, in our homeschool California and also in our working homeschool moms group, uh, what's the best choice? What are the pros and cons of the different homeschool type options? And that's a that's a not something we can answer here in 15 or 20 minutes, but we can kind of give you a brief flyover of um, of what the different types of groups or options are, and then you can decide what's going to be the best fit for your family. Yes, it's a loaded question, and I kind of want to address the elephant in the room. I feel like sometimes people um, have a myth that Chia doesn't support public homeschoolers, and we are biased because our mission is to serve private homeschoolers, but I think in general, as you know, an organization, our goal is to just help and inform and support any and all homeschoolers <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, to help you on this journey. So we hope that this can be you know, a helpful time for everyone. Yes, yes, absolutely. And I, I think we've talked about it before. Anybody can be a Chia member if you want to support the mission. Um, and so, yeah, as you said, Michaela, thanks for pointing that out. There are, uh, I, I think sometimes we do have to do some myth busting, you know, about what Chia allows and what Chia doesn't allow. And um, so that's a really good point. So, okay, I am going to go ahead and um, share the, my screen with you and then Michaela and I are going to um, kind of go over some of these. So Michaela, I'm just going to start off by looking at this first column, you know, the traditional school education. Um, most people are here because they've already decided that this isn't a good fit for them at least not this year, um, or at least they're really thinking it might not be for various reasons, whether they don't like the classroom accommodations because of COVID-19, or they don't like the, um, you know, the, the requirements that student have, students all have distance learning. I mean, every day I'm hearing something new from a different school district or what they're, of what they're going to do, what they're not going to do, what the teachers have to do. I, it, it's very distressing for me um, to be listening to all of this. And so I can only imagine as parents with children in, this, in these environments trying to decide what they're going to do. Um, and, it, do you, and what about the next, uh, column charter public charter education so that may have been a first choice for many people coming out of public schools but now that's not even an option for most families most of them have closed off or their wait lists are full <laughs> you know but it's it's not really an option now most people are looking to the two other columns on the right to look at either joining a group private school program or uh, filing their own affidavit as a private family. Mm -hmm. Right, right. And so those are the, so those are the big questions. Um, and we are going to be talking about, you know, contrasting and comparing some of these together. Um, but I think the, the, the first, I guess the first thing to take a look at is the learning environment. We know in a traditional classroom or traditional school that children are in a classroom with a teacher. Uh, and then skipping over to the private school satellite program, that's what PSP stands for, and then private school affidavit or the, your individual family private school, those are pretty um, identical, really. There's nothing, take no, no difference between the two, right? Right, you both have full parent control. You're able to choose if you want to do work online or work with textbooks, work with real living books, um, you know, whatever way you want to go about it, those, those are the same in that column. Right, right. And likewise, expectations. Right. Uh, right. Um, unlike um, when your children are enrolled in a public school where the state sets the, sets the standards, when your children are in a private school satellite program or you file your own affidavit or you've got your own individual family school, you're the one who sets the goals, 
and um, I love how you wrote here. And just want to thank you, Michaela, for making this chart available to us. Um, that the accommodations are endless. You know, families can um, are so have so much freedom and liberty to decide what they're going to do. Especially in this day and age, there is so much available um, from home, and it's just it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Right. And we talked a little bit about this kind of plan in our planning your year last night in our webinar, which we'll go ahead and put the link to that in our comments afterwards. So you can um, find out a little bit more about that. And um, I think that would be a valuable thing for our, our viewers to participate in. Um, so individuality, can you explain what that you mean by that when you say individuality? Um, just how you want their individual experience, I'd say, their homeschool experience, what you want that to look like. Um, do you want to have it to where they're completely at home? Do you want them to be in activities? I know, especially during this um, pandemic, you know, there's parents on both sides. Some people really prefer to stay home or need and have to stay home due to health issues or mm -hmm. um, immune, you know, <laughs> but um, there's some people that still are desperately wanting to get their children to socialize and have opportunities to get outside. So those are kind of the differences to where if you join a group, there's going to be activities and um, just different possibilities that you can individually customize. If you're filing your own affidavit, you're going to have to seek out the resources, the activities, you know, it's kind of, do you want to customize everything a la carte or do you want to have some presented to you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And I think um, I, this will be a good time for me to just talk about the fact that when you are enrolled in a private school satellite program, as you've mentioned here, that the private school um, does organize a fair amount of activities generally for the families and for the children that are enrolled. Um, if you file your own affidavit and have your individual family private school, um, you can it, get involved in what we call a support group. And that's usually a social group um, that is had up by a, you know, by a, a team of families and they plan activities for the children, whether it's field trips, park days, they may um, have school t-shirts, yearbooks, school pictures. There's all kinds of different things that the PSPs as well as the support groups do. So just because you file your individual families uh, private school affidavit doesn't mean that you are on your own. There's a big established homeschool community here in the state of California. And um, we're gonna put some links in our comments on how, how to find groups in your area to our, that's our homeschool directory. And also um, what kind of questions to ask about uh, when you do contact somebody to find out whether they're a good fit for you. We're also going to put a link in our comments where you might you might be the the family that says, well, hey, we want you know we we you're a ringleader, and you want to start a support group for you and your friends in your area. So we'll give you some information on how to do that. And she is really excited to be helping everybody in whichever capacity that you choose. Um, okay, so let's skip down to curriculum then. How do you see that as being, it, it, these almost look very similar too. Uh, unlike the public school options, uh, you don't have as many options on choosing curriculum as you do when you're private homeschooling. I think there is a common misconception that you can use anything you want when you're in a charter school and legally as the state of California law stands currently, no, that is not true. That is a very common myth. But when you are homeschooling in a PSP or independently with a PSA, you really do have absolute, you know, control to customize the curriculum completely. Mm -hmm. um, you don't have to use Common Core. You can use religious curriculum. Um, mm -hmm. The testing too, you know, you don't have to test unless you choose to test. So those are great. Um, they, those lift a burden off me as a homeschool mom, that mm -hmm. I know that I don't have to be turning in curriculum work samples. I don't have to be worrying about, you know, I keep my records in order, but it's mm -hmm. not the same as meeting with someone every 20 to 28 days, you know? Mm -hmm. Right, right. I understand what you're saying. So if we were to say, you know, the, the, uh, as far as freedom goes, the um, first option, the public school 
traditional schooling gives the parents no, no freedom to choose. Um, the charter school at home programs give the parents options to choose from, but they, they don't, their options are not limitless. They are given, uh, they're given their they're options. Within boundaries, right? They're within boundaries, right. And then with the private, the PSP and the PSA, um, the parents have unlimited options. There's nobody that they don't have to ask permission. Um, they don't have to seek, um, you know, seek approval for anything. It's the at the parents' discretion. And I would say another common myth is people believe that they can't use un, um, non-traditional homeschool methods when they join a PSP. You know, so for me as a group leader, if you said you want to do unit studies and you're not going to use traditional textbooks, then you could just lay out your plan. I wouldn't deny you from joining. You know, mm -hmm. but that's that's a myth. You don't you don't have to just use traditional textbooks when you join a private school program. I think most programs, you're just going to need to let them know what it is that you're doing. It's just about you communicating and then the private school keeps you accountable for with whatever you're going to have as your plan. Mm -hmm. So that's a good point. I like that you use that word accountability um, because that really is the kind of the difference between the two, uh, the PSP and the PSA option is that the PSP, is required to hold the family's accountability because the PSP administrative team is filing the affidavit upon penalty of perjury that education is taking place, that attendance records are being kept, a course of study is being submitted. And um, so, so really that's a big difference there. Whereas if you file a private school affidavit, you are, and these requirements are not burdensome. It's very easy for individual families to do, but there are some moms who know themselves and they, they know that they need someone to hold them accountability to keep their records up to, um, you know, up to the education code. Others, you know, don't feel that they need that accountability. So, well, and there's also the question of, well, why do PSPs cost? And mostly it is because as leaders, we are taking personal time out to hold you accountable. We are sending you the messages. We are personally looking through all of your papers that you turn in. It's not like, you know, we're just this huge organization and everything goes through a computer screen or something like, no, we're actually taking the time to hold your documents in our hands and look over them and to have that real person to person connection. So some people want that peace of mind, especially if they're new, they're saying, am I filling this out correctly? You know, am I doing this right? And especially new, you know, young moms, they're just looking for someone that's older and experienced to say, oh yes, I've already walked this road. It's right. very easy for me to let you know. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And there's a, I think there's, there is a comfort in knowing someone is looking over your course of studies. Um, I used to be a PSP leader too. I also filed a PSA for a number of years. Um, but to, to know, um, you know, that I made more than one phone call to a mom and said, Hey, do you realize you, you don't have science. You're not doing science this year. Did you, did you forget to put it on your student's course of study? Or did you just forget that you need to do that? and um you know or or some other question on their course of study so i think there is that that comfort from for parents to know that someone who's been down that road before them as you said is looking at their records now now that's not to say that you can't um have an accountability measure if you're a private you know if you're filing a psa um is that you can work with a group of friends and trade papers and say how does you know am i do i have all of my i's dotted and my t's crossed does this look right to you or have your support group leader you know ask them does this look good to you many support group leaders are really want to help new homeschoolers hit the ground running. So they want to help you uh, make sure that your files are set up correctly. They wanna walk you, help you uh, get your affidavit filed correctly. So it's not that they're going to be holding you accountable, but they're there for you if you need that kind of help. So. And I think it's just good to have any kind of mentorship because, you know, you think of it, if you're going to start a new sport or if you were going to take up a new hobby, you would typically talk to someone who has already done it mm -hmm. and you would ask for advice and you would say, oh, can you show me some things? Can you give me tips? So in whatever capacity that might be, it would be great to have a mentor in your life, if that person's online or if that person is with a school or a support group to have just that 
um, maybe a small group of people or just even one person to be that mentor and accountability partner. Oh yeah, absolutely. I agree. Um, there's and there's really no reason, as I said, in this day and age, for families to feel like they're they're isolated. And I know that we have our Facebook groups, and you are free to ask questions and gather information there, and you know, hold little polls or surveys to find out what other people have done. It's not the same though as being in a community, whether you're in a support group type community or whether you're um, enrolling your children in a private school satellite program. Um, I, I would just say that those Facebook groups are helpful, but I don't believe that they really fit that mentoring type relationship. I don't know. Have you seen I would, that happen? Maybe yeah, it's just not I my experience. Totally. Yeah, I would totally agree with that because there are, um, over the years as I have been a PSP leader, the families in our school are like a school family. And I get to know the grandparents and I get to know the cousins and I get to know the kids and when their birthdays are and when the new babies are born. And it's just having a real personal connection with families to kind of come alongside them for the journey that they're you know, walking on this homeschool journey. So that's something that would be kind of hard to replace, I think, online. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And and likewise, when I, uh, when I filed a PSA, we had our... Um, our little, I want a neighborhood support group for whatever reason, we lived in a neighborhood in a community where there were eight or 10 like-minded families. I realize it's probably more common now than it was back then, um, who homeschooled. We had children of the same age. And, and I realized that like attracts like, people have a way of finding each other, you know? Um, but we had that community from the get-go as well, um, feeding each other's kids and, um, as you said, with the new baby, you know, watching the olders when mama has a new baby, just helping out with the carpooling and, and it really was a, it was a, like a body and functioning as a, you know, in a neighborly manner. So um, that's just something you, yeah, that you're not going to get online, but we should probably scoot down. Um, we can, I, I realize we could talk forever about our experiences. <laughs> Right. Well, the support category, I think, is one to definitely highlight because um, the administrator of your PSP will partner with the family, but we're not in 100% control or dictatorship of your family, as I would say, you know, the public school, if you have your child in a traditional classroom, they have the the end all be all say they have total um, control right right and that yeah. is not how a psp is <laughs> mm -hmm. right when your child is enrolled in public school you've given them that authority over you know o over your child's education so you really have very little say in it and i think we've seen exactly how much they want parents' input when we look at, uh, as, and I'm not speaking about specifically about the teachers and I don't, don't want to vilify teachers at all by any means, but um, as, an, as an institution, um, it's a government institution. It, they call, we call them public schools, but they're not really run by the public. Um, and, and they really have not had a good track record of listening to parents lately when we look at the sex ed mandates that and the curriculum that is going through against parents wishes and when we look at SB 277 and the vaccination issues um, requiring all children in a in a classroom setting to be vaccinated against so many parents outcry I, I think you see um, where you've you've delegated control to another entity that does not necessarily want your input <laughs> right? that way. Yeah. And that kind of, I think in effect has parents thinking they need to swing to the far right to say, okay, we're, we just need to be independent now. We want our freedom completely. And that may be the case with some families, but there is also, you know, the next over, if you want to still be connected with a group and you don't have to feel like you're all out on your own, but either way mm -hmm. you get the, independence and the freedom. Mm -hmm. Right, right, absolutely. Um, as I said, I, I, loved, I loved our years as PSA filers and I loved our years of being a part of a PSP. Um, let's see, down to family. Well, you oh, know, records, I think that's probably really important to touch okay. on. Okay, okay, yes, yeah. Um, and I, I think 
think we, we can talk really quickly about faith and belief of the, you know, the family culture um, oh. in both of these options. These are, you know, usually you're finding a, a community of, of homeschoolers that, you, as I said, like finds like you're going to you're going to associate yourself with an organization or with a private school satellite program that is um, like minded with you. Um, but either way, they don't dictate your, you know, Christ centered content or lack of Christ centered content in your child's education. Um, but why don't you go ahead and talk about the family culture just real quick. Uh, we have just found like with our group, whatever you happen to um, personally believe or celebrate, we have opportunities for children to do science fair presentations and just different um, cultural nights and different opportunities where with whatever traditions are celebrated in your family, the children can orally share, they can bring in items to share. So if you still want them to be able to do that, but freely and openly. Um, so as a PSP group, we offer that. I know that um, it's kind of more frowned upon in the public schools is that, you know, they don't typically allow you to just get out your Bible and start talking. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, we do have where your faith and beliefs are shared. Most, I would say, if you would agree, would most PSPs ask you to sign typically some kind of statement of faith if they are a religious group. Mm -hmm. um, you know, families may need to consider that. Right, right. And again, that's important um, too when you're looking at a support group, you know, is do they require a statement of faith? Um, is um, or do they just want you to acknowledge that they are a group that is run by Christian or perhaps they're they have no statement of faith and they're not Christian. If you I, I think it's important you make sure you know what you're getting involved in from the get go. I think when we uh, we relocated several years ago and I got involved in a group that I, I firmly believed it was a faith-based organization and then realized, um, you know, as time went on, I thought, oh, this is not, I should have asked more questions. It wasn't the group that I thought it was. And I, and I went, I realized that I, um, once that became aware I became aware of that. Um, then I realized why I would say things and people would look at me a little funny. Have you ever been in a place where you thought things were different than they were and then and then you got awkward moments and strange looks and then I realized, oh, I, I thought everybody here was the same faith I was, but they're not. So at any rate, it's really important that you ask a few questions from the get go. So you don't, you know, spare yourself some awkward moments. <laughs> Yes, I agree. And there are some groups um, I have heard of Wild and Free. It's a homeschool movement and they're not typically, um, you know, associated with any specific religion or any specific school organization. There's a lot of them. Moms just start them. Tinker Garden, those kind of things. So there's other, you know, groups. There's so many options right now. So uh, whatever they need, whatever you're looking for. Right, right. Or you can create your own. As yes. And that's what if some if anyone watching this doesn't know, Chia has a blog, Homeschool411. You can visit that site and look up on the tab how to start your own group. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. So, okay. All right. Let's get to the granddaddy of all the, uh, all of, all of your, your categories here, records. So what's the big difference here in records? The big difference is you will not have to maintain your legal CUM file records with a PSP versus on your own. And as we've we've discussed in our previous videos this week, it's not hard. It's not something that is, you know, a rocket science, but it can overwhelm you if you're just starting out and you're trying to think of curriculum and scheduling and setting up your schoolroom. Maybe you don't want to think about you know, the legal record end of things, maybe you just would like to take that portion off your plate, then you could join a PSP and focus on the other aspects of homeschooling. Mm -hmm. Right, right. And so the, those that file their own PSA, as we had said before, it, it is not, um, I, I think Michaela said, it's not rocket science. Is that what you said? To yeah. Maintain your child's student records. So that's the big difference. So when your student is enrolled in a private school satellite program, um, maybe I should back up a little bit and just talk about that. We have the compulsory attendance laws in California. All children between the ages of six 
and 18 need to be enrolled in public school unless they're exempted. Now, if you enroll your child in a private school satellite program, it is as if they're enrolled, they are enrolling in a private school, just as if they were enrolling in a private school with the campus. So your child is exempt from compulsory attendance. If you are not enrolling your child in a PSP, you do need to file your own private school affidavit that notifies the state that you have established a private school. You're not asking for permission, you're not asking for approval, anything like that. You're just notifying them that you've established your own private school. So there's kind of the big difference is one files the PSP, I'm sorry, the private school affidavit for you. Um, the other, you file your own private school affidavit. And again, Chia is here to help families that go in either direction. Um, we can, uh, we actually do have a webinar coming up October 6th, our PSA filing party, which has become an annual event for us, where we uh, walk through how to file your private school affidavit together online by the end of the webinar, you will have filed your affidavit and you've done that with, you know, with a team of people from Chia helping you. So um, you don't have to feel like doing it on your own, you know, you don't have to do it on your own um, unless you want to or if you want help the first time. And many support group leaders will help families do this too. This PSA filing party, Michaela, I know you've always been a PSPer. So these, some of these things are new, new to you, um, but it's not new. It, it, it was not original to Chia. We just grabbed that term from other support group leaders who would invite their parents in their group over to their house and they'd fill out the private school affidavit together. And they call it a party and had dessert. Obviously we don't have uh, dessert, but we call it a party and give away prizes. So. Anyway, that PS, you know, so the many support group leaders will help you file your PSA as well. So those are kind of the differences between uh, between the categories. As I said, the first two, we, we're just going to assume that many of you are not uh, are here because the first two options are no longer good for you for various reasons. And so this should help you decide whether you want to enroll in a PSP or file your own private school affidavit. Is there anything we didn't cover that we needed to, Michaela? No, I think we got through everything. Um, yeah, I hope this was helpful to everyone watching. Yes, thank you so much for sharing your um, graphic with us and putting the, all the hard work into this and helping us to explain to families. And yes, Chia does, we really do hope that this is helpful. As I said, we'll be putting some links in the comments below to help you uh, as you contemplate this and help you to move forward. And again, you're always welcome to give us a call or shoot us an email. Chia is here and happy to help you. So, okay, for that, with that, um, Michaela, I'm going to stop sharing the screen and um, I'm just going to wish you a wonderful rest of the day. Thanks for giving up part of your Wednesday to help homeschoolers and it's always a pleasure to chat. Thank you for having me. Goodbye, everyone. Bye-bye.